Nick, you are a good sport to play our silly little game <laughs> with us and to come to our workshop, uh, a space not that unfamiliar to you, because you've got your own, right? I do, yeah. I have a shop in Los Angeles uh, that used to be just me, and I've made kind of all kinds of furniture and canoes, and I've d gotten into ukuleles now. Um, and now I have a bunch of woodworkers there. We have a co-op and making some pretty excellent cutting boards. <laughs> Where does it come from? I mean, where'd you learn it? Who taught you? I grew up using tools. My dad is a furniture maker, and my uncles and grandparents were farmers, and just, you know, we come from a time when everybody would make things. Then I became a scenery builder, and that led me to eventually become more of a shop guy. And one day I had an epiphany and realized I could make a mortise and tenon joint, and I said, hey, I want to, I'm going to make some fine furniture. And so it's, it's, uh, I freaked out uh, about 16 years ago and got my first shop, and I'm still just learning as voraciously as I can. So you don't just practice it, you also preach it. I mean, we've heard you out there traveling across this country telling people to work with their hands, they get a hobby. Why is that? I think that uh, with our gadgets and all of the choices we have in different entertainment channels or what we can do with our spare time, people uh, become overwhelmed with there's so many things to do. I, I'll just play a game on my phone or I'll, I'll do some more shopping. And I've learned, I think, through my childhood that if you make, do something with your hands, whether it's woodworking or fixing things around your house or knitting or making lasagna, which is a noble art, um, those things, there's something, uh, there's something elemental about solving problems with your brain and your hand-eye coordination that is really healthy. Well, I think you're preaching to the converted in terms of the folks who are watching our show. And you know, they always write us for advice. So here's your chance to give out some advice. And in fact, you've got an upcoming book where you give out advice about workshops and getting into this business. What do you suggest? Well, gosh, there's so many great outlets online, but even better, if you can find somebody in your family or neighborhood, there's nothing better than an old guy or lady who has been there and who, who can immediately recognize what you're doing wrong trying to drive a nail. Um, and there's so many small ways you can start. Fix that back porch, you know, build a dog house, a tree house, a bird house. Mm -hmm. But there, there's also great ways, if you want to get started in woodworking, a small lathe is a mm. great way. Um, it's a very easy tool to learn if you get the right instruction, which you can get from books or YouTube. Um, that doesn't make a big mess. Uh, if you have a little garage space, I just always recommend you start with a table and clamps and some chisels and, you know, start learning to cut dovetails or mortise and tenon. And once you learn to sharpen your steel correctly, you'll be amazed at how you, you can shave wood like butter or cheese. And once you do that, I think then your imagination explodes and you say, oh, I, I could make a canoe paddle or a canoe but certainly a dining table. All right, good advice. Find an old lady in the neighborhood and keep your steel sharp. Exactly. We appreciate you coming by. Thank, Thank you, Nick. My pleasure.